In this video, I'm going to compare Notion to Evernote from a Notion user's perspective. Stick around to hear some more. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. As I mentioned, I am a Notion user and I have been using Notion for over two years now, but I do pay attention to other apps like Evernote, Trello, etc. So in this video, I'm going to compare Evernote and Notion. To start with, creating a note in Evernote, I think is probably the, the first thing most people will do because that's essentially what Evernote's for. And creating a note, you can create a note just by clicking the new note button or by clicking on the templates. And from what I can see and from what I know in Evernote, you can either use default templates or you can create your own templates. Now this is my Evernote account and as you can see, I don't use it at all, so there are no templates in here. But if you do use Evernote, I imagine you'll have templates to use with your notes. Now when we go into Notion, the same thing applies. And for this example, I'm going to use a database, just the one, to create the new note. Now in Notion, a new note would be a page in a database. And you could use the plus button in the top right of the database or the plus button inside the actual database. Because we're using a database, it allows us to use templates as many as we want. Now, when we're actually inside the note, Evernote gives you a lot of flexibility with how you write things. So there's different heading sizes, different text styles, and a lot of different text sizes. Then there's loads of colors that you can use for the text. You can bold, italic, underline, and you can put a highlight behind the words. You've got the bullet list, the numbered list, a checklist. You can link things together. You can indent the text and you can format the text whether it's centered or not. And then you can add superset and subset text. You can also add tables, dividers, attachments, photos, checkboxes, and a code block. In order to keep this video fairly short, I'm not going to go through every single thing that you can add into Evernote and Notion, but in Notion you can add exactly the same things with a couple of nuanced differences. So we're going to add the new page in the database as our new note. And we're going to start writing information exactly the same as you could do in Evernote. Now, instead of the menu being at the top, you actually need to go into the text of the block because Notion works on blocks. And you can see we can have the heading one, two, and three, similar to Evernote. We can actually turn it into a page, which is a note on its own, essentially, which is very different from Evernote. You can have the to-do block, the bullet list, numbered list. You can actually add a toggle, and to my knowledge, you can't do that in Evernote. Code block, quote, which again, to my knowledge, you can't do in Evernote. A call out, again, to my knowledge, you can't do that in Evernote. And then as we move across, you can see we can add a comment, which is for interactions. And again, I'm not sure if you can do that in Evernote, but I haven't seen that functionality. Then you can bold, italic, underline, strike through. Both works the same. Then we have the colored of the text and the color of the background. And in Notion, because they're blocks, you can either put a color of the background for the text or for the block. And you can also add a mention. So you can add a mention of a person, add a mention of a page or mention a reminder. Kind of goes into bio-directional linking if you look at it that way, because you can bounce to and from different pages. And you could do this in Evernote bouncing backwards and forwards. When it comes to linking information inside of Evernote, it works pretty much the same as Notion. You can grab the URL, select the text, and then paste it in. And in Notion, it works slightly different because you can just highlight the text and put it in, but essentially it comes to the same conclusion. Now in Evernote, you can add a table, add a divider, add an image, and they work perfectly fine for aesthetics. But in Notion, instead of adding a table or a divider or an attachment as either an aesthetic or a link elsewhere, you can add a divider, which is exactly the same. You can actually change the color of the divider if you wanted to. You could change the design of the divider. So you're given a bit more flexibility as to what your note looks like and how you want to format that note. But instead of just only having the aesthetic look of a table, you actually have a database, which is in Notion. And we are technically inside of a page of a database, but you can add any new database inside of a note. That means you'll have all the functionality of a database, so formulas, relations, roll-ups, text, select properties, multi-selects, all of that would be functional inside of your table, inside of your note. 
So when it comes to the content of the note, Evernote is very bare bones and it's exactly what you need if you're going to take minimal notes. But for me, Notion gives you more flexibility as to what it looks like and what you can actually put in it because you can embed videos, embed databases inside of each note. When it comes to finding the note using shortcuts, Evernote uses a shortcut panel in the sidebar and Notion works exactly the same, except it's not called shortcuts, it's called favorites. When it comes to the storage of notes in Evernote, they use notebooks and stacks of notebooks. So you could have a notebook with notes inside of it, or you could have a stack of notebooks with notes inside of it. So you could have three levels of hierarchy. You can have a note stack, a note and then notes. In Notion, there's lots of different ways you can create your own hierarchy, create your own links. But for this example, I'm going to try and mimic what is shown in Evernote. So we have our notes database, and it is related to our notebook database, which gives us that first level of hierarchy. We have a notebook that's related to notes, which is essentially the notebook folder like you would have in Evernote. And we can use some of the other properties and databases to find things like how many notes are in the notebook, when the notebook was created, any formulas, added tags, added select properties or anything like that. We can add those to our notebook database. Then to add that next level of hierarchy, instead of having a notebook stack in like an Evernote, we're going to have another database. And I've called this areas. You could label it whatever you want. But essentially, now we have an area which has notebooks in it. And inside those notebooks are our notes. And because everything is related, we could count how many notes are in the notebooks that are in the areas. Or we could just count how many notebooks there are. It's up to us as to what numbers we're shown. Now, unlike Evernote, we can keep going. So I'm going to add another database. I'm going to call it categories and I'm going to put the areas inside the categories. So now I have another level of hierarchy. I have categories that have areas in. I have areas with notebooks in and then I have notebooks with notes in. So you can see there's four notebooks in category one because there's two notebooks in area one and two notebooks in area two. And you can see there's five notes in category one because there's three notes inside of area one and two notes inside of area two. And all of those calculations can be done for you. Because of the way Notion works, you can basically pull any information from any of those databases to tell you what you want at any level. When it comes to clipping information, I personally don't read many books. I clip a lot of social media things and a lot of YouTube videos. So that's what I've done. I've clipped a tweet and I've clipped a YouTube video. In Evernote, it worked pretty well. You grab the tweet and you grab the video. And when it works in Notion, it works exactly the same way, except with Notion, you can actually play the video inside of the note because it embeds the YouTube video in the note. So you don't have to go back to YouTube to find where it was. To be honest, clipping the tweets, there isn't much of a difference. But for the YouTube videos, the ability to embed the video straight away speeds up my workflow. So I actually prefer the Notion Clipper to the Evernote Clipper. When you're in Evernote, you can add a reminder to any note you have. You can put a time on it and a date on it for any sort of reminder. And the same thing works in Notion. You can add a reminder so you get a reminder for any time or day that you want to put in. I'm not going to show it in this video, but you can add formula reminders inside of Notion as well to add in space repetition. And if you want to know more about that, I've done a video on my channel all about space repetition inside of Notion. But going back to the comparison, Evernote, you can add tags into each note. From my understanding of people that use Evernote, tagging is a way of finding information. And to be honest, if you've sorted the information or filed the information appropriately, tags are kind of like another folder system. And in Notion, tags work pretty much the same way because you can add a multi-select property inside of the database and that would function as your tag. In Evernote, you add a tag to a note, add a tag to a notebook, and in Notion, it works exactly the same way. But when you're actually using those tags, typically you're using it in search. So when you're searching in Notion, you could search the database. So when you're searching the database, you'd search for either the tag, the name of the note, the name of the notebook, potentially the name of anything else that you know is associated with that page. Or you could use the search function inside of Notion using the control P or command P and search for the page. The main difference between the search in Notion and the search in Evernote 
is the search in Notion searches the page information. So the properties of the page and the name of the page. Whereas the search in Evernote actually indexes the information inside of the note. So from my personal experience, I don't actually have anything inside of the note that I can't identify from the name of the note. So that search functionality in Evernote wouldn't help me out, but depending on how you write notes and how in-depth your notes are, Evernote might actually be better for you for search. When it comes to sharing notes with other people, you can share notes with Evernote and you can share notes with Notion. The main difference between Evernote and Notion in sharing is Notion you can actually share a page publicly, which allows it to be more of a website style page. When it comes to the prices and packages, this is always obviously fluctuating because prices go up and down and features get added and taken away. The main differences from Evernote and Notion with the free packages is the upload size. So in Evernote, it's limited to a restriction of 60 megabytes, but in Notion, you don't have a limit. You just have a file upload size limit, so the sizes can't be too big. Having said that, the second tier of Notion and Evernote work pretty much the same and there's not really much of a difference for most functional usage. It just comes down to the specific nuanced features that Notion may give and Evernote may give, but that is down to personal preference. The biggest difference when it comes to packages is Notion actually offers a student and educator plan, which basically means you get the first tier, so the first premium tier for free if you're a student or educator. So if you're studying, if you're a student or an educator, Notion would make much more sense from a financial standpoint. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I actually started using Notion because the first premium plan was free for me. Something I should note is the audio notes and the written notes you can make in Evernote are much harder to make inside of Notion, but from my personal experience, I don't take audio notes. And if I do, I'm talking to my phone, which could either be Evernote or just a normal phone recorder, and then I'll type it out anyway. So if I'm recording it, it doesn't have to be inside of Evernote. And when it comes to handwritten notes, I personally don't have an iPad, so I don't use that at all. But if you're just using Evernote over Notion because of the handwriting, maybe look at something like Notability or some of the other handwritten note apps that are specifically for handwriting notes. When it comes to displaying the information between the two apps, I think this is where Notion suddenly just goes to a whole new level. Yes, I am biased, but just hear me out. With Evernote, you have notes, notebooks, and that's it. And you can filter and sort, but it's limited. Whereas in Notion, you can see the same database in loads of different ways. So for this dashboard example, I have the notes database filtered in four different ways for four specific pieces of information. And then I can move the data where it needs to go. So you can see I've moved the note from the inbox to notebook one and notebook two. And then I have my notebooks database at the side and those numbers are changing as the notes are getting added. So when I have a quick note, if this is my dashboard, I can push the plus button, add a new note, write whatever I need to. And then when I want to sort that note, I can drag it into the appropriate notebook if that's how I want to sort it. And it will automatically add the notebook tag to it. So if we go into notebook three, because that's where we put it, we click on the notebook template because that's something we can pre-make and you can see all of the notes that are associated to notebook three. Now this is just one of a million different ways you could sort the information inside of Notion and view the information inside of Notion, but that is one of the advantages that I personally use Notion over Evernote because of the many, many, many different ways that you can see the information rather than just the one. I am 100% sure I've missed out some things that you can do in Evernote that I haven't mentioned because I'm not an Evernote user. So do put those things in the comment for people to have a look through. But until then, if you want to learn more about Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.